Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. In this video, I want to go over the Nexion Combo Box. I have one already built up, or an example already built up. I figure if you are interested in this video, you probably know how to put things on the screen already. But I have a button, a couple text boxes, some number boxes, and then the, uh, the drop down itself. Most of the attributes in here are the same as they are in for other devices, buttons, text box, and things like that, but there are some differences. And one of the first ones is in the text itself. I have just have CC in here, and I have my max set at 5. If I try to increase this past 5 and hit enter, I get an error that says the string is too long and you can't use it. But if I go down to what's in the list, and we'll, we'll run this in debug now. If I click on the list, I have, these are all only four characters. I know it shows only three, but there's a space in front of those. But if I go up, I've added one at the bottom. And this is seven characters. So if I select it, it shows up in there. So this initial value that you put in here, this text value, which vanishes the second you select anything, is really the only thing that matters in this text max length. Which I found was kind of strange, but it's just something to know, I guess. And in this, this portion here, this up, if you look over here, there's a little arrow, and I've turned it off. And now I'll turn it on. And that's all that does is it just displays that arrow. And then depending on the way that the menu pops out, that arrow can change. But still, this just will either show it or not show it. And then the colors are fairly interesting too. Because the PCO3, this is the color of this little arrow here. But when I change the color of, of this BCO, this is the background color of the cell, but it's the cells of the things that pop out down here. And they're the unselected ones. So once you select something, it will also, there's another setting for that. But in this case, let's change this to, I don't know, green. And then this is the font color of the cell, not this cell, but the cells down here. So we'll just leave that black for now. But we'll go down and look at some of the other colors. Now this is the color of the cell that's selected. Well, actually let's run this right now um, just to show you what I did. So when I click on this, the selected cell is this one. And the unselected cells are these. And you can see that this 40 is a different. Now if I click on 60, it changes it up here. When I click on it again, now 60 is the selected cell. If I click on 120, now 120 is blank. So now if we close this out and we go down to these colors here and we change it to red and we run it again, now when we click on it, the selected one will will be red now. So you can you can do a lot of changing in this, which is kind of interesting. You can modify about everything. And then if you go up, this is the color of this box here. So we can change it also to match. Well, a lighter color might be a little easier to see. So we'll do a little gray. Now underneath the colors for the list, is this path. And this is the data that shows up when you hit the drop down. It's kind of interesting that they have this text up here that shows up initially. But once you click on something out of the list, which here's your list of data. The path here shows the data that you can show up on the, on the drop down. You can add anything you want, but you have to put a return, and then we can put hello in here. 
and it will add a line to the bottom. So then when we run it, we'll see all these voltages, or the 40 volts, and then we'll see the 1 through 7, and then hello. And there's that hello. And you can add stuff to it, which is kind of nice. The direction right now is set to go to down, but if I change this to up, it should make sense. The pop-out will go up instead of down. And you can see that the arrow changed its direction too, and now it's up above the display. Of course, you have to pay attention to where you put it because now it's kind of unusable. So if we wanted to use it, we would probably just drag this down like this, and then it would work better. I'm going to set it back to down for now. Now the quantity here, it shows you how many items are displayed. So if I'm going to change this to three, and now you see three items in here. We had it set to two. You can do as many as you want until it goes off the screen, and you can even overset it, and it will just go off the screen, kind of like when we had this moved all the way up and we had it shoot up to the top, how it went off the screen. It doesn't like correct or tell you that you've done anything wrong. It just shoots it beyond. So you just have to adjust. Change it back to two. This VVS zero is tied into a VVS one also, which is down here. So we have this two and this two, but we'll do one at a time here. Well, I'm gonna change this to 42. And then you can see there's spacing between there and there's spacing between here. So that just adjusts your spacing between your objects. But if we set this back to two and we change this VVS one to 42, and now we run debug again. We do the drop down. You can see that this arrow's up here, and what it did is it created a, a gap between the arrow and the data that you're moving up and down. This is kind of a weird one. I don't I can't think of an of a of a time where you would want to use this. I really can't think of where you'd want to use the other one, but maybe there is something that, that I just haven't run across yet. I'm gonna change this back to two. Under this VVS, there's a val. And what it does right now is selecting the first item in the list. So when you click on this list, the 40 volts, which is the first line in the path, is what's selected. But if I change this to 3 and run it, when I click down here, you'll see that it's the 100 that's selected. It is zero base, so the 40 is 0, 1, two, and then three. Now this is kind of interesting too. Another one where I'm not sure why you would want this, but if I click expansion and then hit debug on this down setting, which that doesn't make a lot of sense either to me, this opens up so when you would select the page or start your program, it's already open. and then it closes. And then after that it works just like before, but it just starts in a different state. Set that one back. Now this is interesting too, because this just shows the triangles up. We're going to show this here, where it's going to show the background. So it really doesn't look any different until I select. And then you can see this little arrow down here, and it's all green behind the arrow and you slide the data in between. So you can either show the little black arrow or whatever color you want to make the arrows with the background, and it's the same as this in here, the unselected objects in the list. Or you can just show the arrow, or you can show nothing at all. And that's in this mode. So you have no display, only display triangle, and display the background and the triangle. And I want the triangle. And that's really it about the key features of it, or the attributes. Now the way it functions is kind of interesting too. 
And what I have is I have a text box here and a number box and a text box here and a number box. And when I click on this, I have some events. So when I do the press, I'm going to write the values of this, of both the value and the text, you could say. Because the value is zero based, and that's a number, and then the text is what shows up. And I'm going to write that into T0 and N0. And then on the release, I'm going to write the values to T1 and N1. Because you get different things on the press and release. So right now it's set to CC, and the initial value is zero. So when I click on it, and I press it, you can see that I get CC. I have not let up on my mouse yet. So I see CC and 3. And then when I let up, it brings up this display, and it also writes it over here because I released. But what's interesting is when I click on like this 140, even though I clicked again, it didn't change this. So it doesn't detect it as a press, but it changed this as a release. So if you want to get the value that's currently in the box, then you do it on the press. And if you want to get the value that, it's, that you're wanting to set it to, then you do it on the release. So when I press this, the current value is 40, 140 volts. I release, and then let's select this one down here. And you can see that over here is that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and the value is 6. And then we're going to use this button to set this value. On this, I just set the value. CB0 value is equal to 3, or 4, or 5, or whatever it is you want to set it to. And you can see that these are sitting at their default values. So when I press this, my thought was I really had never tested this before this video, so I didn't know what was going to happen. But all it does, since we didn't press on this or release on this, none of this changes. It just changes the value in here. But you could send it from an Arduino. You could send that value and change based upon a button push that isn't part of the next gen. There's quite a bit you can do with this combo box if you really get into it and want to use it. So in this video, I kind of went over some of the attributes of the combo box. And then I also went over some of the functionality, how when you first press it, you can get the value that it is. And then on release, you get the value that it will be. But it's the second release because you click on it once and then you release and it brings up the menu. And then you click on it again. And when you release, it populates or whatever it is you want to populate. Well, that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.